Hello and welcome. Welcome back to those following the series and welcome to those new to the series. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short set of video tutorials on how to get going using IBM's Softlayer Cloud. And today we are doing, or we've reached, tutorial 20. And what will we be doing? Well, we'll be doing some shell scripting and some IP tables work, particularly in relation to SSH and FTP. So, why? <laughs> why am I covering some shell scripting? You know, that's, that's a bit Linuxy rather than uh, cloudy, let's say. Um, and it actually came from these two simple questions. Um, I met some colleagues at work and they were asking me, well, you know, what, question one and two here, but you know, what, what firewall should we use for our Linux machines on software? You know, should we put a firewall in front of them? And, you know, how should we actually configure that up? And it's like, well, good question. Um, I looked at them quizzically, I must admit, because uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, IP tables, away you go. Um, why don't you just configure IP tables? And it became clear to me during the conversation that, you know, unless you're a Linux person through and through, and you've been working on a lot of Linux machines, uh, especially if you're maybe new to DevOps or you've been more on the dev side than the ops side of things, that possibly you won't have come across IP tables in any great detail. So that, that is one of the reasons we're going to cover IP tables. The other reason was to show how quick and easy it is and to provide some examples um, as scripts to script this all up, which would link in with our previous video um, on Chef Recipes, because you can actually configure IP tables from Chef as a recipe and then distribute that out to your machines based on what role those machines have. Um, so today we're not going to cover the actual Chef aspect of it, we're only going to cover an introduction to IP tables, but that's why we're going to cover this firewalling directly on the Linux machine itself, rather than a firewall uh, like the FortiGate, a dedicated or shared FortiGate that you can rent from software. So this is about the machine itself and how you could secure it. Equally, if you've only got one or two machines on there, it's possibly not worth you actually going and uh, getting a dedicated firewall. So you just want to secure one or two machines. Another use case might be you've just created two or three machines for some testing for less than a month and you just want to know that those machines are going to be secure. So again, this is the video for you because IP tables is the way to go. Um, question number two, how can we move large application install packages to our machines? Now covered in one of the earlier videos, um, actually moving your code onto the object store and then mounting the object store using cloud fuse. And that is certainly one way to do it. But another way to do it would be, well, why don't you just SCP it? Sometimes people don't want to SCP it. They want, you know, for whatever reason, they're married to good old fashioned FTP. So, you know what, we're going to cover FTP. So how do you move large application install packages on? Another method may be to just simply use FTP and very quickly install, configure your server as an FTP machine and then you can actually receive those files. Um, next up is going to be what are IP tables? So a little bit more introduction. I couldn't possibly do justice to how intricate and brilliant uh, IP tables is from its early introduction in 2000. It is now um, a phenomenal tool in terms of what you can achieve and what you can do with IP tables. So you can go very, very advanced on IP tables, but we're going to stick with simple stuff. You know, I've said in the middle three bullets there, what does it actually enable us to do? Well, you know what? It actually gives us an interface to NetFilter, and NetFilter provides us with packet filtering, stateless and stateful, network address translation, and port translations. So the bottom line is, it gives you a firewall. You can create firewall clusters, you can do natting, you can do quality service implementations and if you want to go really advanced with IP tables way beyond where this video is going to go uh, there's many many great YouTube videos on there um, 
There's also some great um, Wikipedia pages that you can review and indeed there's lots of documentation from many of the Unix vendors. Um, but if you do want to go really advanced then you can do all sorts of crazy things um, with mangling and use a chain called mangling to actually achieve that. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to cover an awful lot of ground. We really are. So we're going to set up three machines in VirtualBox that we'll use to test our Linux firewall. We're going to set one up as a server and two as clients. This will give us a range of IP addresses to play with. We're going to set those up, I'll show you on the next slide, with specific IP address ranges. We're going to learn how to use the tables by iteratively creating firewalls. So first we're going to create the total lockdown firewall in IP tables. And we're, I've called that base here just to make it easy down here so that I'm not triggering the same, you know, total lockdown systems plus allow. So call that base. Total lockdown is base. You also might want the antonym, which is a wide open system. Come and attack. Um, but that can be very useful for certain instances where you quickly want to open something up and then turn it off again. And that's another good reason for having these IP tables as scripts. Then we're going to cover that base, total lockdown again, plus allow pin. Because total lockdown is what it says. It won't even respond to a pin. So you want base plus allow pin. Then we're going to do base plus allow SSH, secure shell and pin. Then we're going to cover base FTP secure shell and ping, then base yum because of course ping SSH and ping and FTP that you still won't be able to yum update. So we're going to cover base yum FTP SSH. This will probably trigger the fact that I'm going to use CentOS again. <laughs> Pretty much always do. Um, then we're going to cover base HTTP yum FTP SSH and ping. So. Three and four there, just to facilitate our FTP, we're going to install VSFTPD. To facilitate HTTP, we're going to install Apache. And then we're going to finally uh, finish off this video tutorial 20 by creating two virtual machines on software, take our scripts over and run those scripts. Just lastly, um, what are the three machines where we're going to create a server, a client one and a client two? I've set up here, it is best to test your firewall settings on machines that you have console access to. I cannot emphasize enough the pain you will have if you go messing with IP tables uh, directly on the cloud and how easy and simple it is to lock yourself out of your machine, um, possibly then not being able to get back into it at all. Um, hopefully you'll be able to get to the console, and certainly in software you can get to the console, but if you're playing with somebody else's cloud, you may not have the ability to get back into that machine, so you're going to have to rebuild it maybe, uh, clean OS install. So possibly best to test out, play with, and figure out how things work using VBox on your local machine, which is what we're going to be doing here today, before we go to uh, software. So we're going to have three machines. I'm going to emulate software on these machines because I'm going to have a public network. I'm going to use a bridged adapter probably. Um, and then we're going to have a private network on the 1002, just like we did for our chef. You can visibly see what we're going to be doing. We're going to be setting it up to test that we can do the things. So take those uh, six or seven items I had on the previous page. Just flick back to it. Total, wide, base, 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 etc. We're going to do those things in this sort of configuration, where on the private network, we will allow everything between all three of these machines. Whereas on the public network, we will not allow client two. We will deny their access to all of the things, whether that's ping or any of the others. Obviously, wide open, it'll be free game to all of them. Um, all the scripts, I'll pop them onto GitHub straight after this, uh, when I finish this video series, and they'll be available. So you can download those and you can play um, and tear, tear them apart and reorganize them and make them be what you want them to be. Um, I should emphasize that when we get to the scripting of um, 
creating a client or several clients or several servers within SoftLayer itself, uh, that script will be on there as well. And again, it's a wrapper or a utility script around the SoftLayer API, which I use because it's just handier rather than trying to remember the syntax of the actual SoftLayer command line itself. Um, so we'll be walking through that in detail and that will be available on GitHub as well. So, big long introduction, sorry for that, but hopefully now that's set in your mind what we're going to be trying to do today. And uh, I guess without further ado, let's go and do it. <laughs> 